Three candidates are vying for the presidency in Rwanda, where incumbent President Paul Kagame has won every election since 2000. In a recent campaign rally, Kagame told supporters a lot has been done, but more is possible if they choose him again. There are roads, electricity, and many other infrastructures that we have achieved, but we still want to achieve more. We will do that with your help starting with the elections we have on July 15th. The 66-year-old Rwanda Patriotic Front leader is expected to win these elections once again. One of the reasons, say analysts, is the way he's been able to guide the East African country since the 1994 genocide when an estimated 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed by Hutu extremists. The first one, which is coming and coming again, is about security and stability. Uh, the, the language and the practice and the success around the stabilization and the security, mainly internal politics, I think it is joining the, the expectation and aspiration of many Rwandans after, after this tragic and historical background. But Democratic Green Party candidate Frank Habineza, who ran against Kagame in 2017, is in the race again this year because he says the incumbent president has stayed around way too long. He told VOA he successfully campaigned in 24 out of the 30 districts so far, including this one in Gichumbi, and voters have been more enthusiastic this time around. I'm giving them hope that at least after the 30 years we need something different. We need to see a different way of living, a different political program, a different thinking, a different vision. We are not going to destroy the good things that have been done, but we want to give them better, a better hope, a better future. As for independent candidate Philip Mpaimana, a journalist turned politician, he too respects how far the country has come, but wants to be considered as someone who can move it forward. This is also his second bid for the top job. He says his manifesto is covered in 50 articles with innovative ideas and initiatives. Other candidates were barred from this race by the National Electoral Commission for various reasons. One was the president's fiercest critics, Diane Ruigara, who was once again barred on the grounds that she had failed to provide a criminal record statement and had not met the minimum number of supporters' signatures. Ruigara expressed her disappointment on the ex-social media platform, where she told Kagame, this is the second time you cheat me out of my right to campaign. Why won't you let me run? Critics and rights groups have long accused President Kagame of silencing voices of the opposition and creating a climate of fear which discourages dissent in general. On the streets of Kigali, while support for Kagame remains strong from some, others say they'd like to see issues such as joblessness addressed. You see the progress this country has achieved by the leader who's in charge. We wish that whoever is elected should not destroy what has been achieved, but to continue it. The youth make up most Rwandans. We want the person who will be elected to set up projects that help the youth get jobs, because most of them are completely unemployed. According to the World Bank, the unemployment rate in Rwanda was 14.9% in 2023, while the group lauded the resiliency of the country's economy with a 7.6 growth rate. It also said that public debt had increased significantly in recent years. Mariama Jalu, VOA News, Kigali in Rwanda.